Come, let us worship God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son and the Holy Spirit, creator of heaven and earth. Amen. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Klein United Methodist Church. I have just a couple of announcements before we get worship underway. The first is that we have no uh, community life night dinner this week. No youth, no children in honor of you guys being out of school. However, we do have a Bible study. We have choir rehearsal. We have the other parts of the programming going on that evening. I'd like to welcome any visitors that we have today. We're so glad that you're with us. I'd like to direct you to the Welcome Center that's just outside the narthex, outside these doors. There you can find information on um, the clergy, the staff, all the ministries of the church. We'd love to get to know you better. And uh, Finally, I'm going to make a quick plug because they gave me a minute. I've got a Bible study that started this past week on Wednesday at 10 a.m. We just did the intro. So you're still with, within, you know, you can come in and not have missed a beat. I'd love to see you 10 a.m. on a Wednesday. We're doing 1 Corinthians. And now let's worship. Please stand. Setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hand to yours, believing there's so much more. Knowing that all you have in store for me is good. It's good. Today is the day you have faith. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day.
Amen. I will stand upon your truth. And all my days I'll live for you. All my days I'll live for you. And I will stand upon your truth. I will stand upon your truth. And all my days I'll live for you. All my days I'll live. Today is the day. invite you to remain standing and those of you who are joining us virtually if you would join us now for our call each day of our lives God touches us with his love God is faithful with his goodness we should be just as faithful with our gratitude And uh, together now, let us reaffirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, and in Jesus Christ, saved by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, third day he rose from the dead. Sitteth at the right hand. From thence he shall come. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sin, resurrection of the body, everlasting. Please be seated. Climb time. Weekend edition. Good morning and welcome to Klein United Methodist Church. We are so excited to have you worshiping with us this morning. Please use your phone to sign in with the QR code on the back of the pew or on the poster out in the lobby. If you're watching online, please use the pop-up or the link on the page to let us know that you're here. If you're visiting with us, howdy and hello. We have a welcome center located just outside the sanctuary doors if you have any questions or want more information about our missions and ministries here at Klein. Check out these numbers for Trunk or Treat. You guys are amazing. Keep up the great work. And if you're available to grill hot dogs, we really need some extra hands that afternoon and evening. Sign up on the website. Join us as we present our third graders with a new Bible on October 23rd at both services. Third grade parents, if you haven't signed up for a Bible yet, make sure to register on the website. Pastor Kerry will be leading our next Wednesday night Bible study starting this Wednesday. They will be reading Reckless Love, Jesus' Call to Love Our Neighbor. It starts at 6.15 p.m. in room 404. If you'd like to reserve a book, please send Kerry an email or contact the church office. Did you know that we have a foundation here at Klein that supports the mission of the church? The Klein Foundation was established in 1983 and has been making disbursements to the church since 2011. Most recently, their gift paid for the sound booth enclosure in the sanctuary that helps protect our very expensive equipment. Brochures about the foundation are available outside the sanctuary today and include a testimony of how one of our church families has used the foundation to leave a legacy. 
Finally, today is Pastor Appreciation Day. And as a staff member of the church, I'd like to take a personal moment of privilege to mention a few things I appreciate about our pastors. Jennifer never ceases to bring a smile to your face with her crazy stories. Not only that, but she's also got some killer dance moves. Yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's cheering to you. But I will walk 500. Carrie always has a listening ear and is our biggest cheerleader. We want the world to see another V R V R C T O R Y V. Lawrence supports his staff extremely well and is always ready to protect the church whenever the need arises, including killing, wa killing wasps on the playground. Yep, he was right. <laughs> That you will take a moment today to let the pastors know just how much you appreciate their ministry and service to Klein UMC. I know I truly appreciate their dedication to us and especially appreciate how they're not going to be mad at me for showing these videos in public. Have a great week! Friends, one day Jesus was headed to Jerusalem. On his way, he met 10 men who had leprosy. Leprosy is a skin disease that makes you have horrible bumps and sores all over your skin. It was very painful, and because people with leprosy had all these sores, many were afraid to get near them or touch them. It made their lives horrible and lonely. When the 10 lepers saw Jesus, they called out to him for help. All Jesus said in response was, Go show yourselves to the priests. They follow directions because when Jesus tells you to do something, you do it. People had learned that by now. On their way to the priests, they were healed. I don't know about you, but I would be so happy that I was healed and didn't have these awful sores all over anymore. We don't know what nine of them did, but we do know what one did because the story continues with him. That one man turned around after he was healed and came back to Jesus. He praised God and threw himself at Jesus' feet, thanking him. Now, the interesting thing about this man is he was a Samaritan. Samaritans were considered outsiders. Jewish people did not welcome them. But it was the Samaritan leper who recognized, appreciated, and celebrated what Jesus had done for him. His faith healed him and he took the time to thank Jesus for that healing. Jesus did not come to save just the few, just the chosen ones. He came to save everyone, even the people who are considered outsiders. Take a minute to think about what Jesus and God have done in your life. How have you responded? Be like the Samaritan and take the time to say thank you. It's the least you can do. See you next week.
come and sing his praise. Alleluia, joyful voices raise. Alleluia, come and sing his praise. Alleluia, joyful voices raise. Alleluia, come and sing his praise. Alleluia, joyful voices raise. Now it's time for prayer. I invite you, before we pray together, to take a few moments where you are, here in the sanctuary or at home watching with us, to lift up to God those things that you want to celebrate this week, those praises that you have, and also take a few moments to lift up whatever worries or heaviness there is on your heart. Oh God, God of grace and mercy and love and abundant gifts, we come before you this morning, your people, filled with the worries of the world. God, there's so much worry. Listening to the news, looking at careers, looking at struggles that family members are going through. God, there are so many voices competing for our attention. So much turmoil in the world around us. God, I would ask this morning that you would quiet all those voices. The ones that are in our minds, pulling on our hearts. And the voices around us, coming from the world surrounding us. God, allow all of those voices to subside so that we can hear the one voice, your voice, that we are called to heed, to hear, to follow. The voice that speaks not to our selfishness, not to our own concerns, but to your way, God, to your guiding light, God, to the way that you would have us be in the world. God, let us hear the truth of who you are and what you want for us. God, lead us and lift us this morning and in each morning to follow. God, encourage us and empower us to be your people in the world, spreading your grace, your love, and your light to everyone around us. Let all of our concerns about the stuff of the world the way the world calls us to choose sides and separate ourselves from one another and instead remind us that we are called to be together, the body of Christ in the world. God, empower us to do your work this week. Empower us to see the ways in which you are calling us to move in your name this week as we pray the prayer your son, our Savior, taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as we worship together. Oh! 
me yet. You're not finished with me. You're not finished with me yet. You're not finished with me. You're not finished with me yet. You're not finished with me. You're not Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made. You're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay. And I know nothing has been wasted, no failure or mistake. You're an artist and a potter. As I invite our ushers to come forward, I want to just tell you, if you've not been to the back side of the church this morning, if you go back there, there's a lot of cars and some wood and there's a construction project going on back there. It's actually an Eagle Scout project that's happening in the back of our, uh, back by the fields back there. They're putting in a gazebo and I just want to thank you because it is your support of this church and its facilities and that scout hut out back that we are able to support as many scout troops that meet here as we do. And it is just your generosity that makes that happen. Will you pray with me? God, we are so grateful in the ways that we get to be part of your mission and your work here on earth. And we are also grateful in the ways that you call us, all of us, all of our life, heart, soul, mind, and even the gifts that we give. So Lord, take these gifts, bless them, and make them move into the world so that more know your name and know what you have done through Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen.
now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go, show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? He has, no one, has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God for the people of God. Our story today is a story of Jesus doing what Jesus does. It's a story of healing. It's a story of redemption. But it's also a story of a grateful attitude. Let me see if I can give you some context. It's 10 lepers, and in the Bible days, leprosy had a stigma attached to it. First of all, you were believed to have done something whereby God is now punishing you for what you have done, and therefore you are experiencing leprosy. But even worse than that, it was not curable. So you were doomed, and you were destined to be isolated and to be separated. In other words, lepers were written off. They were not considered valuable, meaningful parts of the society. Uh, we here in the United States and, and, and our culture have dealt with uh, leprosy and if it was still around. And interesting fact, you may or may not know, uh, I think it was. Hawaii, one of those little places, somebody's shaking head, you know that's the, you've, you've seen that, you've heard that, Hawaii, and then I realized there were a couple other places uh, uh, somewhere up on the East Coast, I think, I forgot, maybe somewhere in Mass, and then of course, you know, Louisiana had to have a place, Bob, but they were smaller than the one that was in Hawaii, and, 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 and most of us never hear about it, because again, you know, that's something we don't talk about. Uh, that's something we don't deal with. That's something we, we take and we put away. Now, here's the question that I want to ask as I go further down uh, uh, understanding this whole story and what it means to us. Who are the lepers of our day today? I want to ask that a different way. What segment of our community have we written off? Because obviously they've done something wrong or they wouldn't be in that condition. And their condition is not fixable. Is it the homeless? I got all these conflicting emotions that I keep working with. And don't y'all judge me because I'm confessing. But I want to have a conversation with the young man standing on the corner and Reverend Red, pray for your pastor because he, he's probably not in the right place and God needs to get him there. But, 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 but I want to have a conversation with him, Joe, and, and I want to ask him, you're 35 years old, you don't look like you're impaired physically. Is there some mental illness that we need to fix? Or why, is this what you expect to do for the rest of your life? Can I help give you some incentive to... 
I know that's not. They don't need that from me. They, they, sometimes they're actually hungry and, and they need a meal. But, but who are the lepers of our society today? Is it the teenage boys and girls that are being trafficked, both immigrants and others, that we tend to not want to talk about? Y'all know this area of Houston. You drive up and down 1960, you can find almost anything you want. Good, bad, and ugly. Is it, who, who are the lepers? Who, who've been written off? Is it the mentally ill? Because it seems to me, for some reason, Kermit, we still don't want to talk about mental illness. And yet we know it's real. I want you to stop and I want you to ponder because here's the thing, and I'm going to move on, but I think that we sometimes become way too comfortable writing certain people off because of certain conditions, some of which may be of no fault of their own. And I just want you to be careful because the kingdom of God says a different story can be had. This story tells us that something different can be had. Let's go forward and see where it takes us. So Jesus is on his way doing what Jesus does and being who Jesus is. And all of a sudden, out of the, 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 the nowhere, out of becoming invisible, there are 10 lepers who are bold enough to cry out to Jesus and say, heal us. Now, the implications here are many. First of all, I've already told you that they're isolated. I've already told you that they're separated and they, that they don't mingle with people. So it wasn't like the woman at the, at the well who could just stand there and talk to him. It wasn't like the woman with the issue of blood who could reach up and, and, and could touch the hem of his garment. No, no, no. They were at a distance. They knew the rules. <laughs> they understood their place, duh. But something that we've got to take notice of is worth noting is because in spite, Renee, of the messages that they had been told, in spite, Debbie, of the experiences that they've had where there was no hope, they heard about a man named Jesus and decided to give him a try. And they cried out, you're the one. Again, I pause because it saddens me to acknowledge that there are things in our lives that we treat as if it's leprosy. And I want to caution you around that. I want you to stop believing the message that there's nothing you can do about it. I want you to stop believing the message that it's got to always be that way. I, I, I'm talking to somebody. Maybe you're listening on virtual uh, screen, and I want you to put that coffee down and, 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 and turn me up just a little because this may change your very life. These lepers had been told all their lives that there was nothing that could change their condition, and they believed it except when Jesus showed up. And, Sarah, I want to encourage you young people to know that even when we adults let you down, even when we adults fail you, even when we adults will sometimes disappoint you, please know that Jesus is always available. All you've got to do is call. All you've got to do is reach out. Here's what I need somebody in this room to believe. You're an adult, and you've lived with it for a long time, and it's been shameful, and it's been painful because somebody told you you couldn't get rid of it. I stopped by today to let you know that Jesus is still in the business of deliverance. And there is nothing too hard for my God. I could go down that path, but then y'all going to be mad because I'm going to keep you here to 1030. And I don't want to do that. I want to let you go because I want you to come back. And you know, Earl, you can't come back if you don't leave. But I want you to think about what's the leprosy in your life 
What is the thing that you keep thinking you can't fix? That habit, that addiction, that bad relationship? I said I wasn't going to go down that path, didn't I? Okay, I got to go. You think about it because it's worth noting. There is healing available. There's deliverance available. And how do we know? Because they cried out to Jesus and he stopped what he was doing. Oh, I love Jesus. I love him, Susie, because he's never too busy. I love him because he's never annoyed. <laughs> I love him because he never grows weary. Is anybody hearing me? I love him because he's always so gracious. He's always so kind. And just like he would expect any loving father, mother, family member to do when someone cries out, the, the lepers cried out, and Kathy, he stopped what he was doing, took the time out of where he was going, and said to them, this is how you may receive your healing. Go and show yourselves. And they did. And as far as we know, 10, all 10 were healed. But then the story takes an interesting twist. Because after everybody had gotten healed, Miss Glenda, the nine went on about their business, and there was one who recognized that something miraculous had happened and decided to come back and to acknowledge that it had happened and to acknowledge his thankfulness. Now, I got to be honest with you. I tried to find in the written commentaries and in the written descriptions of this story. Don Fox, I wanted to find something that was obvious whereby when this Samaritan came back, he got something that the others didn't. But I couldn't find it. No, no, Michelle, they were all healed. And he didn't reject their healing simply because they didn't say thank you. But I didn't stop there, Miss Ann. I began to think about, okay, so maybe this guy did get something that the others didn't. And that is he got the experience now of a thankful existence. He went from being hopeless <laughs> to being cured, Charlie. And so his thankful existence is worth noting. And so here's where I want to go with this. Is, so here's the thing. I need you to get this. Thankfulness is a decision that you make, and it is a choice that you make, and you make that choice not just daily, but several times throughout the day. To be thankful is a decision that you make. It is a choice that it's an attitude of gratitude that you take on. And here's the crazy thing, Delenn. Yes, there are times when our circumstances require and almost automatically will, will, will well up out of us attitudes of gratitude. Uh, that wedding that went off beautifully and your baby girl was just the prettiest thing there and the family all got along and no fights broke out. Lord, thank you. That promotion on that job that you've been looking for and, you know, it's even better than you thought because now you're doing what you like to do, which means it's not a day's work. It's just fun and getting paid well. Lord, thank you. You walk out of that hospital room and you walk out of that hospital bed and you go down and you get to do what a lot of us have not done. And for the ones who have, they can tell you it's a great experience because, Carrie, you get to ring that bell and you look up and you say, Lord, thank you. There are lots of circumstances whereby our appropriate response, Trey, a automatic response is to say thank you. But my friends, I need to caution you because thankfulness is not contingent upon your condition. 
And there are times when things are not so well. There are times when things are really pretty bad. There are times when you feel defeated. And in those times, Delenn, what I hear the Scripture saying, Jane, is that in all things, we ought to give thanks. In all things, Neil, we ought to give thanks. And I so I know now, you know, some of my babies over here who's smarter than me, Sarah saying, now wait a minute, Pastor, you had me up until you got there. Because now this don't make no sense. You, you mean to tell me if we flip that thing and if we go back to the thing to where, uh, you know, not only did I not get a promotion, I, I, it went worse than a demotion. I got a pink slip. And they told me, you know how the language they use? Well, you know, the company seems to be going in a different direction now. And, and, and your services are no... You mean I'm supposed to be thankful that they've taken 20 years of my life and all of my... blood? I'm just telling you what the Bible said. You mean to tell me that the doctor, the doctor has told me not that I've been cured, but that this thing has metastasized and that it's not going to get better and that, in fact, it's terminal in its, in, 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 in its best and, 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 and I've got to live with this and, 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 and you're telling me that, that I'm supposed to be thankful? And my answer is yes. And the reason the answer becomes yes, and I'm glad you asked because I, I want you to get it. Because the things that I know about my God is this. This is what I know to be true about my God. No matter how bad your situation, you're not alone. God is with you. And there's something about knowing that you're not alone that gives you strength, Charlie. There's something, at least, about knowing that you're not in it by yourself that gives you the ability to make, this, make it through. Not only are you not alone, but God is with you, and God is holding you in the midst of it all. God is keeping you in the midst of it all. And so, yes, there's a reason to say thank you. What about thanking him for just waking you up this morning, huh? No matter how bad the situation may look, it's another day that you were not promised what about having a reasonable portion of health? And, oh, you got a reason to say thank you. But here's the other thing I know Bob Smiley to be true. And that is that no matter how bad it gets, not only am I not alone, not only am I not in it for myself, but there are one or two options that I can look forward to, Carolyn. One of them is... God will hold me until he gets me through it. And Gail, some of my best testimonies have come when I've been in a valley. And I couldn't see my way, and God just walked me through it one step at a time, reminding me, Mark, that I'm with you and that I'm more than the world against you. So just walk with me. There's a, there are folk in the room whose testimony is, uh, I was lost and he found me. I was sick and he healed me. There are those in the room whose testimony is, uh, he walks with me and talks with me and reminds me that I'm his own. So that's one thing that I know will happen. He'll bring you through. But then there's something else that I have to celebrate, Donna, and that is that if he doesn't bring me through, he'll bring me to the resting place on the other side. And I get to rejoice in heaven forever. Oh, there's a reason to be thankful. Because the end of the story has already been written. There's a reason to be thankful. Because we already know the outcome. And can I just tell you, I got to quit. But can I just tell you that I have found that there's so many advantages, Marsha, when you take on an attitude of gratitude. You know, it's hard to feel sorry for yourself when you got a thankful attitude. It's hard to be a victim of circumstances when you got a thankful attitude. But when you remember how good God has already been, when you remember how much God has already done, when you remember what God is doing, right now, Becca Porter, then it doesn't matter how difficult the situation, you have a reason to tell God, thank you. So friends, in good times, 
What do we say? Thank you. Friends, <laughs> in difficult times, what do we say? Because we know that the God we serve is still on our side. And to that we say, to God be the glory. <laughs> and amen. Stand to your feet as we sing our way out of here. Oh God, oh God, oh God. whether you're signing off virtually or if you're leaving the building physically, as you leave, I want you to go encouraged. Encouraged in the knowledge that there's nothing too hard for God and that what he really wants from us is a continuous attitude of gratitude. Go. Be blessed and be a blessing. Amen. Amen.